G'day everyone, welcome to Life on the Hulls. My name's Ross and I'm building a 40 foot liverboard sailing catamaran from a mould I purchased around three years ago. Now in that time I had to fully restore the mould and uh, and pretty much get it ready for production. Now what I've done since is gel coat the mould and make just about every component for the internals including water tanks, modules, bulkheads and the works and this is a pretty comprehensive channel so don't forget to subscribe to the channel, please like the video as you watch them and share it out to all your friends. I really appreciate it. I'm passionate about the build and there's a lot of information here to absorb. So thanks for joining me and let's get into it. Right, now, so I'm up in the bow and uh, right at these front wing frames here, and I'll show you a close up of what I've got to do here. Because they're all hatches and because it's a solid bridge deck, I need to make sure that I've got adequate drainage down in these compartments. Obviously we're gonna be throwing fenders and ropes and lines and sails and all the things that uh, we hope we're gonna put into the, the bow here. Obviously light stuff, because it's up on the bow of the catamaran and we don't want a lot of weight up here, but I've got storage nonetheless. Now having to be able to drain that is critical for getting in there, but if it should happen to get in, I need to make adequate drainage, which will drain straight through the bridge deck and into some reverse spacing scuppers, obviously to drain out and drip off into the sea. But how I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna use a hole saw, just like I did with the through holes. I'm gonna make a hole around about 100 millimeters wide, and I'm gonna core out the 30 millimeters of foam that is actually sitting or laminated into the bridge deck. And by coring it, I'm gonna get back to solid glass. And then, and only then, am I going to be able to then tab the actual floor and the bulkhead and everything back together along this line here along the front of the boat. So really important I get this done correctly. I'm gonna to have to put adequate um, support in there. I don't need through holes or anything, I just need simply need a hole. But I don't want to just drill a hole through the foam, core out the foam and have it drain that way. I want an actual area where the water's gonna flow into it, a deeper dish, which is gonna be about sort of like that profile, essentially, so it'll flow in and then run away. So that way, if a fender's sitting there, it'll still drain. We don't want anything getting caught in these, obviously. We want it to be able to weep and get rid of water continuously, and therefore, whenever we're in a dry anchor, you can just open the hatch, let the wind dry it out, and, uh, and be able to give it a flush out, let it drain out really easily. So I've got to make sure that I adequately seal this entire environment um, properly. And the only way to do that is by having this um, cord out section right up against the bulkhead so that absolutely no water is going to pool against the bulkhead. It'll all drain into this drain and out. It's how I've seen it done on other cats. It's certainly how I intend to continue on. Now with the hatches themselves that are on the deck up on the bow here, I'm going to have a separate drain for each and every one of those that'll run down and clearly run down our, and outside of the boat as well. So I've got to think about that now. I'm going to have to space these equally across the bridge deck so that when you look at it from underneath on the water, they're not sort of higgledy-piggledy. They're going to be very neatly positioned. I intend to have four of these all the way across the bridge deck. Um, they'll be nice and neat. Actually, there'll be five. So there'll be one in each compartment and one in the anchor uh, windlass, obviously. But that's probably the most critical one because I'm going to guarantee you I'm going to have salt water in there that is going to need to drain away quite quickly. So I'm going to get on with calling them now. So I'm over here on the starboard side. Now this has got a bit of an issue. I've, I've actually found that the, uh, the drain needs to be right here, which is not in the center of this hatch. And the reason why it's not in the center is that this wing frame is actually 150 mil further over than it is on the port side. And the reason why I've done that is to allow for some more cabinetry in the back there of my, uh, of my head or in, in behind in the medicine cabinet, I guess you'd call it, or cosmetics cabinet. But outside, it means that those scuppers that are underneath are actually exactly in the right position. I've got one off center. I want it all look nice and neat underneath the boat from the water. All right, so I've now got these holes sorted out um, and they're all perfectly spaced so that underneath is going to look um, accurate. And the only one that really looks quite unusual is this one here because it's not centered in the hatch. There's a good reason for that, obviously. I want to be looking at it from underneath. So because I had this extra gap here between the head and this first wing frame, um, I've had to position this one further over to the left, which is actually exactly the same as I have 
over here with this one here. So you can see how this wing frame is, is exactly on the edge of the chamfer panel. So that other one over the other side there is actually exactly the same distance from the chamfer panel. Oh, it's been brutal on the knees today. <laughs> been on my knees all day, but I'm getting there. I mean, these are... Mm. got this is that the water actually drips down hit the bulkhead and falls straight down the hole if I left a gap between the wall and the bulkhead there's a good chance the water's going to actually end up pooling in the bulkhead ultimately I'll end up with rot with uh, with my bulkhead but in this case I'm not going to you can see my holes pretty uh, drastic measures okay so I've got to actually fill the core before I can glass these so I'm using a tried and proven technique here with a piping bag just to make sure that I get the, the goods in So they're not pretty, but they're cords, so I'll need to give these, let these go off for a while, and then I'm just gonna come in and give them a sand, and then I'll uh, get it back to raw glass at the base, and then I'll be able to just have it glass these with some nice big patches of 600, and, uh, and get them done. So you'll see here, I've actually sanded a 45 degree or a rounded bull nose on the top. I could have used a router, but I think, it's a little bit easier just with the sander. I mean, it's never going to look fantastic anyway. This ultimately is going to have four layers of 600 double bias over here to make up for the fact that I've lost foam core in that hole and then flow coat over the top. But before I do that, I have to tab the bulkhead down into there as well. So the, again, the bulkhead sits right on that line. It's going to be tabbed down into that hole as well to really give it some bite. And, uh, and ensure that it's not going to go anywhere. So I've used my roller sander just to round the edges off. I've hand sanded it. I'm going to flatten out all of the uh, core in the bottom. I'll lay about four layers of 600 double bias in there, peel ply it, and then I can put this bulkhead in and, uh, and, and really get moving now. So this now has one layer of 300 and three layers of the 600 double bias on here. And now I'm gonna peel for it and then it'll be nice and neat and basically that's finished. All we need to do now is drill a hole through the center there and a scupper underneath and it's done. See that, all the crinkles here. I stopped going down in the hole. It's just too difficult. Can't get it to level out, so I'll have to sand that one. So they're all done. It's floor glue down day. I'm pretty bloody happy. Uh, I'm gonna glue down the port forward cabin floor. Now this is a pretty critical component of this boat because the forward main compression bulkhead and the center compression bulkhead actually sit on this particular piece of sole. Um, there's plenty of structure underneath it, obviously, but it actually is going to be glass to this particular floor. So not only is it uh, a structural component of the boat, it actually allows me then to go a lot further forward with the project. So um, the preparation, because I have this angle glued in and all of my bulkheads actually have a flange of angle on the top of them, I've got plenty of surface area here with which to glue the, uh, the floor section down onto, but it requires a bit of preparation. Now, remembering that I put this um, angle on this wall or hull side around about probably eight or nine months ago. So there's epoxy there that's fully cured. Um, and obviously if I just go and slather epoxy on it now and then glue the floor down, I'm not gonna get a great bond because there's, it's just gonna be a mechanical bond. I'm trying to, gonna try to, uh, or just a, a, you know, a, an epoxy on epoxy bond without any real chemistry there. So the key to it is preparation. I'm using uh, 80 grit sandpaper on my, um, on my sander, on my orbital sander here to really etch it and 
rough it up so I can get all these little valleys for this epoxy to set in, but I'm also going to give it a good acetone wipe. So lots of preparation going on here. Now I also need to remember too that the floor is around an inch on top of these, um, these angles. I need also to prepare the side here because I intend to glass and tab the floor down as well. So not only will it be glued from underneath onto the angle, it'll also be tabbed to the hull side. So there's plenty of structure going into this section right here. Very important that it's done correctly. I have deliberated daily on whether I'm ready to put this in. I've now put in extra conduits through the bulkheads. I've got the water tank sitting in this section behind me. Um, it's important that you think all that through because I try to think, you know, 12 months ahead when I'm putting in water lines and deck washers and all this sort of stuff, then I've got adequate uh, passageways for stuff to go under so that I don't have to be drilling holes and trying to seal epoxy up underneath the floor hatch. So for now, I'm sanding all of these edges and the whole side and ultimately uh, I'm really starting to get ready for the final showdown with this floor this afternoon and then I'm going to leave it for the weekend to set, come in on Monday and I can start glassing my bulkheads in. It's a very exciting point for me in this build. When I decided to put these tanks in, I had this thought that I'd have really good access to them um, via a hatch. Now the forward hatch here is actually quite large. It's probably about probably around the same size as the top of this tank. Um, due to the fact that I want ultimately to be able to slide this forward, perhaps get access into this small compartment here. Um, and also I need to get access into the front of it there to access a bilge pump because it is the, uh, the water tank actually, the large water tank actually abuts there. So it's a solid bulkhead. So I need a bilge pump in front of that. So I need to be able to remove that bilge pump. So I need to be able to slide this back and forth. So this is gonna work really well. Um, but I just had a thought um, before I glue the floor down, what I'm anticipating on doing is cutting the hatch around about the same size as the actual tank, and or at least the same size as the tank on its side. And I just thought maybe if I can turn it like this inside while it's under the floor, and I should be able to, I could then theoretically be able to slide it back and lift it up out of the hatch. So I thought I'd test it by just putting in something that represented the floor. Now that's the floor height there, but here would be open. So if I make contact with this at any time with this tank, it means that firstly it's at floor height, but the actual with the hatch out, it does allow me by the look of it, if I can turn this, and it's only just touching this, which is, remember, and it's a void, it's actually the hatch opening. Technically, I could possibly remove this tank and use this for something else if I ever needed to. Now it's unlikely, or I can just have it sealed or remove it for servicing or for cleaning or whatever. But uh, I'd then have to slide it back and then lift it up out of the hatch. But I reckon that um, given the clearances I have, if I made the hatch a similar size to the physical tank so that it can actually slide out, I think there'd certainly be a chance that I'm going to be able to get it out. I'm not holding my hopes. It's not something I'm anticipating having to do. But you never know when you're going to need extra storage or the ability to be able to remove this to get underneath it for repairs to you know any uh, region below here now there's no through holes in this section here because there's no water physically leaving the uh, the cavity but there certainly is water going into it into this tank Now, because there's gonna be a considerable amount of epoxy sitting just on this angle, and then the floor's gonna squash it down, and uh, obviously the squeeze out has to go somewhere, and there's a pretty high... Every time I try to record this, the guys are smashing some beer on the of a bloody axle over there, and I've been going on for about an hour, so this is starting to give me the shit. 
Okay, obviously, because I'm going to be putting a lot of epoxy along these angles here for this floor to squeeze down onto, there's going to actually be a lot of excess and squeeze out in this region here. So what I've done is I've just put an apron of packing tape here in the hope that I'll be able to catch it. And then ultimately, um, when I cut a hatch, access hatch in here, I'll be able to pull that away and it'll actually be suspended up under the floor. There's no other real way of uh, circumventing the squeeze out other than putting a lip um, on the actual floor that fits identically inside this, uh, this angle. So that's not gonna happen in this case. I'm just gonna put this packing tape, I've done it all the way around here and uh, I'll continue to do all of the underneath side like an apron so I may never be able to get it out but once the hatch is cut I can just reach under and grab hold of whatever I can get and get it out and, and that will stop that epoxy from landing on my really nice uh, flow coated finish here which I'm about to tidy up as well so I'm aiming for a good cosmetic finish ultimately uh, little things like this little bits of preparation can make a big difference to the end result I don't want to be looking in my hatches and seeing big lumps of epoxy that's fallen down because I've uh, been a bit careless in my prep. So. Right, call me paranoid, but that's the sort of thing that I, I always try to think of is later on I don't want to be chipping and sanding bits of, bits of epoxy out. If I can do the work now and prevent it, then uh, good for me. Can't be paranoid enough and you just can't clean enough. But look, even that, just after a year or so of sitting there, that is filthy and I've just sanded that again. So you must be absolutely conscientious with your preparation and when you're using um, putting epoxy on epoxy you must use acetone you can't use styrene because it's not what it actually is designed to do the acetone will sort of dissolve that top sheen of uh of epoxy and remove the amine blush i mean we've already given it a bit of a clean with some water um, but now we're using the acetone just to, to tack it up a little bit and get it ready for final epoxy coat. Rather than just sit items down on the floor here, I'm gonna actually put some uh, self-tapping screws and screw the floor down to the, um, the composite angle just to make sure that I get an even pressure all over the floor uh, to make sure it is dead level. I'm, I've just checked it with the spirit level, it is level, but if I put a few screws in, 10 or so screws, I can always fill that with epoxy. And, uh, and just to make sure that I get even pressure all the way around on this floor. Because I'm not gonna have a lot of access under here once I put this water tank in, it's gonna be a bit hard to get to the underneath the floor. I'm gonna give this a wipe with some um, methylated spirits or some denatured alcohol, you'd probably call it in the uh, Northern Hemisphere. Strip the wax, and this is very important, won't strip the wax off the flow coat, whereas acetone would. It would uh, take that wax off and basically return it to a gel coat. You can see here, even my footprint here is leaving a, a pretty nasty mess. So I'm just going to basically clean out the build prior to me gluing this floor down. Always start off with a clean result. Get rid of any little rubber marks from my shoes. And uh, you know, if I was a good proper boat builder, I'd probably have socks on or slippers. Very exciting times. Uh, what an all ball theater in this last half an hour. All right, shoes off. And uh, let's get piping. Just remind me to put the tank back in before I put the floor down, please.
I asked you to remind me to put the tank in. So we're going to put that in first. If I forget that, I'm going to roll the trough. First things first, tank must be in here. <laughs> That's what this is all about. Right. I'm gonna sit it in the middle so I don't get any epoxy on the tank. And then I'm gonna get up on this little step at the back here. Luckily I've made this step because I don't know how I would have put this floor in. I'm gonna manhandle this piece into place um, in one movement, I'm hoping. And it looks like I've avoided getting it on me for, for this moment. <clears throat> Alright, it's looking good. So this is the moment, guys. The moment of truth. A year has led up to getting this floor down. Once this one's down, I can start putting in the bulkage. So let's get going, eh? Goodbye to that hatch for some time. Then it goes. heap of these self tappers and screw it in on or near the bulkheads and around the outside so I can see whenever I kneel on here it's squeezing out so I need to make sure that I get one in here we've got to wing the uh, angle here So now I'm gonna do this section here. Uh, I've just basically taped it. I'm gonna give it a wipe with acetone. I'm gonna fill it and I'm gonna put that step in. Now I've put a piece of angle on the other side of this, but the bulkhead actually has to intersect here so I can put a step down um, flush with this floor. There will be a step down, but the bulkhead actually sits right on this end here. And, uh, and once this bit's in place, I'll be able to traffic back and forth on here. I just lost one of my video lights down in the hole and right down there and it went through the limber hole but I just got it. I didn't film it but I had my arm in there <laughs> on it and I thought I, I would have just had to stay there till I cut the bastard open but it fell, went bang, bang, down the hole, down in there and just fitted through the limber hole and it's only about this big, it's only a little LED thing but uh, yeah, not a good scene. But anyway, I've reached it and uh, we have light again. If I didn't have these, you'd probably be in, uh, probably in the dark. It's quite a gloomy day. We've had a lot of rain today. And uh, anyway, here we go. Let's get this done. Here we go. <laughs> so ultimately down in the side here, this is going to be filled with um, uh, vinyl ester and milled fibre. So I'm going to have epoxy underneath and then vinyl ester sealing it and then tabbing uh, back with the original chemistry of the boat. But there's nothing like epoxy for gluing down items like this. It, it, it is probably, uh, you know, just it's an essential, really. But anyway, there we go. I'm going to try to put this in in one go. It's getting a bit tight down here. But anyway, here we go. And that is down, officially down. That was probably about the wettest weekend we've ever endured. I mean, honestly, last month we were burning two, two three kilometres away here. The whole place is on fire. Now we've had uh, floods. So I've just come in here, spent the last three hours mopping up water that's blown sideways into my tent. We had uh, 120 k an hour winds and, uh, you know, I think about 12 inches of rain over the last two days. So 
yeah, Sydney's flooding, bloody roads are bloody closed again. And uh, anyways, not a lot of water came in here, just a few splashes in. But uh, anyway, I spent a few hours just cleaning up, mopping up uh, any remnant water. But the good thing is, it's locked down and I've got to remove all the screws here and start filling in around the outside here with my uh, vinyl ester and my milled fibre to give that a good strong bond in that gap. Very important, you don't just use Q cells or anything like that just to fill that. Um, thinking the epoxy would work, however, I intend to then glass with vinyl ester uh, my tabbing and tab the floor down just as I would do a bulkhead. So I'm gonna retain my chemistry and stay with that vinyl ester system all the way through the rest of this build. The epoxy is purely to, to glue it down to that angle. It gives me that really hold fast uh, uh, sort of um, hold on the, um, on the floor and then it'll be glassed and tabbed in place. So I'm gonna get my electric power screwdriver, remove all of my fastening screws and, uh, and basically get on with it. And then I've got this bulkhead in place here. This bulkhead is dead square. And you can see now that I can glass it down to the floor there. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna lift it up about two or three inches on some two by fours or four by twos. And, uh, and I'm gonna, once again, I'm gonna sand underneath this bulkhead and then I'm gonna wet it out again. And I'm gonna soak it thoroughly in vinyl ester prior to putting down the filleting compound. But what I intend to do is use, once again, the vinyl ester and the milled fibre. I'm gonna pipe it all the way along the bottom of the bulkhead or along the line that the bulkhead fits all the way down here and up the walls here and sit it down in one place. Remembering it's not just the base here, I also have wing frames all the way along here. I intend to embed in the vinyl ester um, uh, and mill fibre compound to make my initial bond and then I'll fill it and then I'll tab every single section of this bulkhead and get it in place. So pretty exciting to get this done. Now it'll be a permanent fixture in the boat and I'll be pretty happy to get that because I think I've lifted it about 300 times but now I've done my drains in all the wing frame compartments. I'm now ready to glass in the main forward bulkhead. And now I can start moving back. Pretty happy times and uh, I'm gonna get on with it.